Streaming live on whitradio.org from High Tech High School, North Bergen, New Jersey. It's the Triple Decker Show. I'm your announcer, Maxwell, and now your host, Ahmed. Good afternoon. I'm your host, Ahmed. With me today is Maxwell. Behind the glasses, Brianna and Katie. And today's topics are South Carolina officer shooting, two-year-old falls in, in cheetah exhibit in zoo, and we're going to explain how it happened, and North Carolina college shooting. So, Max, let's start with uh, South Carolina officer shooting. So a few mourners trickled into the fielding home for funerals in Charleston, South Carolina. Charleston Mayor Joseph Riley comes by to pay his respects and show support for the Scott family. This is heartbreaking. This is a heartbreaking tragedy for everyone in our community, he says, adding they share the grief with the neighbors in North Charleston and with the Scott family. It breaks everyone's hearts wherever we live. So the police with the, uh, meet with the passenger. Meanwhile, police continue to investigate the incident in which Scott ran from his car after a traffic stop when the shot while f then was shot while fleeing from Slager. On Friday afternoon, police met with a man who was in Scott's car when Slager pulled it over from a broken taillight. The passenger's name wasn't in a police report obtained by CNN. The passenger was detained briefly after the shooting, one officer wrote in his report. Scott's family a Scott family attorney, Chris Stewart, said the man with Scott was a co-worker and a friend, but he did not identify the friend by name, nor did Tom Barry, or a Southern, a South Carolina law enforcement division spokesman who confirmed Friday's meeting. So Slager in jail. Slager has been, fi uh, has been fired and faces life in prison or death penalty if convicted on a murder charge. That's a police officer. And let's go from, on Thursday, a dash cam video and new witness emerged from the day Scott died. The dash cam footage shows Slager taking, talking calmly to Scott during the traffic stop. Scott apparently says he has no insurance on the vehicle and Slager returns to his car to do the paperwork. Moments later, Scott gets out of his car and bolts. A foot chase ensues. Scott never reappears on the dash cam video. But a witness later takes video on the officer shooting Scott several times in the back as he is running away. So nothing in the video demonstrates that the officer's life or the life of another was threatened. National Urban League President Mark Morial said the question was the question here is whether the whether the use of force was excessive. So you know there's a little bit more on, but like you know let's let's just skip that part because we have enough inf information. So Max um. You know, he stopped him for a faulty tail light, a broken tail light. And while the officer went to do paperwork, the, you know, what's his name? Uh, I think Scott, he runs from the scene and tries to get away from the police. But the police officer shot him a total of eight times. He connected with five of the bullets. And, you know, the guy is, you know, he's African-American, he's black. So, you know, uh, and this is in South Carolina, too. A lot of people are... You know, saying, yeah, you know, he should be, obviously he lost his job already. You know, there's still, we're still waiting for more to come. And I know, I read a little article that the officer claims he was reaching for his taser instead of his gun. So, you know, in the moment, he, I guess he forgot where, you know, that's what he says. That's what, he forgot where his gun was, maybe, because well, the guy was if, running and if he you shot pull, him. If you reach for your taser and pull mm -hmm. out your gun, I think by the time you pull it out, you're going to realize that it's not Yeah, exactly. Injury. And after you shoot it eight times. You're 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 gonna realize that that's a gun, not a taser. Yeah, that's what he says. You know, he's just I guess trying to make something up. Oh, um, so but it doesn't look totally um, bad on him. Walter did not um, from the video. It yeah. Showed that Walter did not threaten the cop at all, and that he just kept running away. Yeah. Um, I didn't. I there was no audio on the video that I watched. Mm -hmm. Um. It was definitely wrong. Like, but yeah, there was no it reason was definitely for wrong to shoot him. I. Do you think that he got the received the right punishment? You know, he loses his job, and maybe he might even die by uh, the death penalty. Yes, if he's definitely. convicted of the murder charge. Yeah, I definitely think so. But um, I don't think Walter should have run, should have ran from him. Yeah. Um, even though he did not have insurance, uh, he did not. Uh, the car that he was driving wasn't insured. Did he own the car? It was his car. Yeah, he did. And there was an, another reason that he might have been was it says Scott was the subject of a bench warrant of over $18,104.43 in unpaid child support at the time of this stop, according to court records. That may be why he ran, an attorney for the family said. So it could be, you know, maybe because of the car, or that could also... No, that, that's be, probably why he ran. Yeah, he that would, could be he wouldn't have run. Um, 
if it was just for uh, the car not being insured. Yeah, but the officer was definitely out of line to do what he did. Yeah. And let's see, as you know, the story develops, we'll find out more and we'll revisit this topic later on. So Max, uh, the cheetah, a two-year-old falls in cheetah exhibit in zoo. Do you want to tell us a little about that? Yeah, sure. <laughs> that paper is gone. Dude, I don't have the paper. Oh, here it is. You don't. All right. Uh, parents could face charges after a boy falls into a cheetah exhibit at Cleveland Zoo. Mm -hmm. Zoo officials in Cleveland are considering pushing for child endangerment charges against the parents of a two-year-old boy who fell into a cheetah exhibit. The boy suffered leg injuries, and leg injuries after dropping 10 to 12 feet into the Cleveland Metro Park Zoo cheetah exhibit. Unfortunately, we have a number of eyewitnesses' accounts that point to the strong likelihood that the child was dangled over the rail. Executive director of the zoo told CNN affiliates that's what happened. Mm -hmm. Kaur says that the child's parents quickly went to the exhibit after the fall happened and that the cheetahs made no attempt to interact with the child or his parents. You know, that's how fortunate, you know, that they are. He falls into, the two-year-old falls 10 to 12 feet. He gets leg injuries. You know, it's, it's terrible, but he still made it. And the cheetahs, you know, thank God, you know, they, they didn't, didn't do Yeah, anything. they didn't pay any attention to him. Yeah, they just ignored him. First off, parents. he's... With the what? Two years old, and yeah. um, good thing he didn't fall on his head and break yeah. his neck or something, and he only um, suffered leg injuries. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that the cheetahs didn't pay any attention to him. They probably thought he was like a plush toy or something. Maybe, and his parents ran down too, and the cheetahs didn't even do anything to the, his parents either, which is really good. And maybe, you never know, maybe they could have been startled if the parents just rushed in there. And like, you know, like just thank God nothing happened to them. And it also says well, the child and his parents have not been identified yet. The boy was transported to a local hospital for observation and is said to be in stable condition. Um, they said that the child was, um, that the uh, child could have been, that he was like being dangled over the rail. Mm. Do you think that's what happened? Do you think he fell over? If he was dangled over the, over the rail, there's people that say that, right? Yeah. Okay, then if, I think, you know, people would have make something like that up, especially in an incident like this. So if that was to happen, then something definitely should be done about the parents. And I think it says the mom was already holding two other kids in her hand, so obviously she couldn't hold the third one. That's why, that's what what I pictured was, you know, she has her hands full of each, bless you. She has her hands full with, um, you know, two kids, and then the other one just, like, walks on its own. But since you say he was dangled, and that's what other eyewitnesses said, then something should definitely be done about the mother to, you know, make sure that nothing like that ever happens to threaten a kid ever again like that. I don't think that the child was being dangled over. I have a picture of... Um, the, there's like, it's like a concrete, no, it's like a brick wall. Yeah. Um, it's not like a railing. Oh, it's a brick wall? Yeah, it's like, so it's, it's brick, and then okay. on the ledge it goes over, and there are like two wooden, two, uh, three wooden rails on right. an incline. So, if the bait, if the kid did get up there on his own, yeah, he would have to crawl over the, uh, other three, mm -hmm. um, which seems, uh, you know, bars. unlikely. So, right? yeah. So the child must have been put up on the ledge to get a better view of the cheetah. Yeah, definitely. Um, and I guess he fell over. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, but thank God he didn't get hurt. Yeah, that's really good. And now let's end the show with the North Carolina college shooting. So North Carolina college on lockdown after man shot dead. A gunman walked into a building on campus of Wayne Community College in Goldsboro, North Carolina on Monday today and shot the school's print shop operator killing him, authorities said. The school was placed on lockdown and the gunman remains at large, but all buildings have been cleared. Major Tom Effer of the Wayne County Sheriff's Office said, This is not a random situation, it is an isolated situation. The victim, Ron Lane, was a longtime employee. He and other employees knew the man thought to be the, thought to be the shooter, uh, authority said. Using the term person of interest, Effler said the man thought to have carried out the killing is Kenneth Stansel, a former student who did not graduate. 
The description given for Stansel matches the, the description for the officer the sheriff office had previously given using the word suspect, a bald white male, five foot eleven, with a tattoo over his left eye, and a goatee. He is thought to be wearing a blue jacket and light colored pants. This is indeed a sad day for Wayne Community College and a close family and community, school president K. Albertson said. Our hearts are heavy at the loss of an employee, a valued employee, and we will soon be reaching out to his family. The shooting took place on a third floor of a campus building despite earlier reports the victim was not killed inside the library. So it says he was a former student that did not graduate that ended up killing or that's you know that's what's most likely um yeah, he's the, the suspect sus yeah the suspect so if it was him do you think do you do you know of any reason why he would do something like this well um and I, I could understand his anger mm -hmm. for not graduating yeah um but i don't uh if there's no information or if he's like not if the man who's suspected of shooting him, yeah. shooting the man who got killed, uh, if they had like no affiliation with each other mm -hmm. or never spoke before, um, yeah, that's that's what. Uh, I don't think I there was a reason him. for uh, him to get shot. Yeah, unless there was something in their personal lives that happened that it didn't have to do with the school, which is unlikely. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. And also something else, while authorities were clearing out rooms, they deployed tear gas into a restroom. Someone was in, Effler said. The person inside turned out not to be the suspect, though. So, you know, they used the tear, ba tear gas on the wrong person. And, you know, as time, to, as the story develops, because this, this happened earlier today, um, when we find out more, we'll definitely revisit this topic again, and we'll say about the, we'll talk more about the suspect and his punishment on what is going to happen. All right, Max, that's going to be it for today. Okay. Uh, thank you for watching, and thanks to our panel, Maxwell, Brianna, and Katie Fork in the Glass. I'm Ahmed, and this is the Triple Decker Show on whitradio.org. Yay. Yeah.